Hey, welcome to a special three-part series of In the Labs with Todd. Over the next three videos, I'm going to show you how to create a large-scale project using our software, taking you from the initial design all the way through to the finished thing. Now, if you're already a version 11 user, that's going to be great because I'm going to show you how to create this in VCarve Pro version 11 and take it all the way up through Aspire to add some special elements to it. If you're not yet a version 11 user, then I'll be touching on some of the new features of V11 that you might be interested in. And you might wonder what we're going to be making. Well, I'm going to make a garden bench. Now, a garden bench might seem a little odd, but I think it'll be perfect for all kinds of special occasions, especially with Mother's Day coming up. One of the great things about this is that it's actually going to make you think a little bit about joinery and how you can actually make all of your parts fit together properly. When I first started this, I was a little unsure of how it was going to go, but in the end, I'm pretty happy with the end result. First off, we're going to need design. And like we all do, we have a look at the internet. There's all kinds of stuff out there, all kinds of really nice designs, but a lot of them are really complicated. I really need to simplify this down so that I can use simple joinery and look at all the limitations or overcome all the limitations of using a three axis CNC machine. As always, I find it easier to get started with a project like this with a sketch. Now, it doesn't need to be exact, just something roughly so you get an idea of what you're thinking about. Um, like always, these things are iterative. They do change over time. So just grab some markers and just start, start sketching out your ideas. Okay, now that we have a rough design, it's time to start thinking about dimensions. So if you do a quick search of the internet, of course you're going to find all kinds of great stuff like that. So that's what I did. I, f I went looking for some garden bench dimensions, found some dimensions from real plans, and also some real products that were for sale with other dimensions. They were all over the place. So I decided to cherry pick out the ones that I thought were good, compared them to my couch in my living room, and that gave me a great starting point. As I mentioned, we're going to start off in VCarve Pro, not VCarve Desktop. There are some really good reasons why, and let's have a look at those right now. First of all, in desktop, we have a, a smaller work area. It's only 24 by 24. We can't use nesting, or we can't use the automatic nesting feature. No toolpath templates. We can't use the gadgets, and there's no job setup sheets. Now, the two that are really important for this job is I want to go outside that 24 by 24 inch envelope. And also, I might want to make use of those job sheets in the end, which I can't in VCAR Desktop. Now, let's go ahead now and jump into the software. Okay, as you can see, I already have a job set up already. So, let's have a look at the job settings for this. So, this is going to be a single-sided job. Now, I want to create my working drawing at actual size. So we're going to start off with a width of about 80 inches, um, a height of about 40 inches. And because I don't know what material thickness I'm going to have to work with, I think one inch is probably a good place to get started. So let's go with that. Zero off my material surface. I'm going to set my datum to the bottom left hand corner. This is going to become uh, important later on when I'm drawing out my drawing. Um, and you'll see that a little bit later on. The modeling resolution, I'm going to set that to standard, which is fastest. There isn't any 3D content in here, so I don't need to worry about a massive amount of pixels. This is going to be great all 2D cuts. When we get around to adding some 3D content, I'll show you how to deal with that then. So let's just go ahead and click OK. So the first thing I want to do is create a box for the side profile of my bench. So we're going to go to create a box. And we are going to make sure it's 25 by 35. We can click create. And we'll close that down and we can just drag that where we want it to be on our job. And that looks pretty good right there. I just want to make sure that it is snapped to the bottom of here. Now you're going to notice too that I've got my grid already set up here. So let's have a look at those settings. So if we go up to edit and go down to snap options, that's F4 in your keyboard in case you forget, we have the snap to grid turned on and it's set to a quarter inch. And we also have our fixed nudge distance at a quarter inch as well. That'll make sure, that'll make it easy for us to move things around in chunks of a quarter inch if we want to. Just go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to need to create this another box, but for the front profile of our bench. So let's just go ahead and hold down our Control key and our Alt key and drag that across to somewhere around there. Press T on our keyboard to bring up our transform so we can go ahead and set our sizes here. We're going to make the new width of that 45 inches and we're going to click Apply and then close that down. So we have a box for our side profile and a box for our front on profile. Now, 
Let's refer to our dimensions that we have. I've got my little cheat sheet here for me, so I've got them all in front of me in case I need them. So let's start off with the height of our top of our armrest. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag down a guideline from above here. And you'll see that as I drag, drag that along, the actual location of that shows up. So right there, I'm at 8.5 inches. So I'm gonna drag that up to be just about 23 inches. That's the height of my armrest that I want it to be. So let's just keep going up there until we find 23. And there we are right there. Now I also know that I want the width of the top of my um, armrest to be about 12 inches. So let's just go ahead now and draw a box. That's gonna be approximately 12 inches across. And you see that as I draw that box in there freehand, it's snapping to the grid, it's snapped to that guideline. And all I need to do is just go over till I see the width of um, 12 inches. And I'll make the height about three inches, I think, or three and a quarter, that's perfect. Again, not looking for exact stuff, just something so we can get a good idea of what's going on here. And let's close that down. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to draw in our legs. That's pretty easy to do. We're just gonna draw a polyline. We'll draw a line from that corner down here somewhere. So the back leg is gonna kick out a bit further than the front leg, so that looks good right there. Just go ahead and do that. So that's our back leg. Close that down. And we're just gonna copy that over. So we're gonna select that, hold down our control key and drag. We press H on our keyboard to flip it over. And we're gonna go ahead and just line that corner up there. Go into node mode and we can drag those two nodes so they're back into the inside of our box that we created so we know what's inside that envelope that we're working with. So that's great. So the next thing you wanna do is to start thinking about the seat height. So again, let's drag down a, uh, a guideline and we're gonna put that at about 16 inches high. So somewhere's around there, that's great. And we're gonna draw a box there to represent that. Make sure the box is about there. It looks pretty good. And we're just going to zoom in a bit. And we'll just snap that on there. And that looks pretty good for the, um, the seat height that we're going to talk about. Next thing we're going to need is a, an actual back to our bench. Again, it's a really simple job of just drawing in some vectors here. We're going to do a little guesswork here. It's going to go up somewhere to be around there. It looks about the right angle that we want. That looks good. Drag it down here, across there. And we press tab on our keyboard to finish off that line. And we hit close. So there we are, sort of the basic start for the side of our bench. I think that looks pretty, pretty nice. So now let's talk about the face of it. And we can extrapolate a lot of that stuff from this side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and draw in a rectangle here. We're gonna make it one, one inch wide and we're gonna make it the full height of that. And this is gonna represent the arm of our bench. Let's slide it up one inch, perfect. Let's close that down, that's great. We're gonna go ahead and select that, hold down our Control key and our Alt key and drag it across. Control means copy, Alt means to kind of lock it in that mode, or in that, uh, on that axis across the job. That's perfect. And the next thing we're gonna do now is think about our back. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna draw a back. We can inference, so we can go ahead and find the, the top corner of that and drag over and you'll see that now I've inferenced that. It's gonna give me a guideline for that, and I can draw in the box for a back. Maybe somewhere around there. I'm gonna make that about five inches tall, probably seems to be about right. That's good right there, perfect. Now we're gonna draw in the actual brackets that hold on that box or hold on that backboard. So we're gonna draw in, again, another one inch piece here. We're just doing this very organically. You can see how I'm just kind of going along with the flow here, not too worried about too many things. Close that down. That looks really good. Again, let's drag that across to the other side. Same technique, holding down the Control key and the Alt key. Then we're gonna size our back, our, our back of our bench board down to fit in between those. Obviously, they're not gonna share that space right away yet anyway. That looks pretty good. Now let's talk about our seat. So that's pretty easy. Again, it's just another box right down here. Draw that in. Just gonna scoot this over a little bit. Press T on our keyboard, close this down. Press T on our keyboard and we can stretch that out to fit. And there's the seat of our bench where it's gonna be. And that's pretty much all we need to get started with this. Now that's great and all, 
But the problem with this is that even if we went and we worked through all of our different um, tooling and setting up our whole file based on this, we have no idea what this, whether it will stand up on its own, whether or not the proportions are correct, it looks good on screen. So how can we go ahead and do that? Well, let me show you how to create a very small maquette or a very small version of this bench so you can take a look at the sizes and also we can look at some of the joinery we're gonna need in order to put this all together. One of the great new features of version 11 that I use all the time, especially for large projects like this, is the multiple sheets. We can use, not only create different size parts based on the sheets that you happen to have, like the sheets of material you have, but also it helps in your design process because we can actually create our initial design and then do things like create the bits that we want to at a smaller scale to make like a small scale miniature of the thing you're going to make. So that's what we're going to do right this second. So in the software, I'm going to go over to my sheets tab. Currently right now we have one sheet and it's called sheet one. Let's just select that, right click on that and rename that. And we're gonna call this original design. We'll press enter. And then we're gonna go ahead and add another sheet at the bottom. And we're gonna call this maquette. And then we're going to click out of that. You'll see we have maquette. Now if we zoom out a little bit, you'll see we have another sheet over here called maquette but it's actually the same dimensions as our original design, which is not what we want. We want to have this to fit an A4 size piece of paper, something that we can print out on our printer. So let's select that and we're going to go down to edit and we're going to change the dimensions of this. So the width of this is now going to be 11.75 and the height of it is going to be 8.25. Everything else is going to stay exactly the same. It doesn't matter the thickness of it or anything else it doesn't really matter here. We're just going to click OK. We zoom back out again. We're going to see that now we have this large sheet over here, which is our original design. And then we have a little sheet over here, which is the A4 size of paper, paper called maquette. Now, if we go back to our original design, just simply by clicking inside of that sheet, we'll take a look at what I actually use to create my maquette with. Now, as you saw a minute ago, I work in the software very organically and once I had the design to the point that I showed you, I went in and made some subtle adjustments. So if we go ahead now and turn off the layer that I was working on and turn back on the layer called original design, you'll see here that this is the design that I worked from. It was pretty darn close to what you saw. Just a few subtle differences. I've added in some boards on my seat that we're gonna sit on. Um, I've added in some supports here, which in the end we didn't use, but they were there right away to start out with. And then my backing board or my back the arm that holds the back of the bench on is slightly different shape, but overall it's pretty much the same. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to copy to sheet called maquette. And you'll see that now over here um, on my maquette sheet, I've got some vectors. So we're going to just going to make sure that we turn back off this layer one, make sure we have the original design layer selected. That's why you can see both of them at the same time because I had both of those turned on. So there we go, let's go over to our maquette sheet. Now, through trial and error, I found out that if I go ahead and scale this down to 15% of its original size, then that gives me what I need to fit on my A4 sheet of paper. So we're gonna press T on the keyboard. And typically what I'd be doing is typing in real world dimensions here, like in inches, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down and choose percentage. So I'm gonna change this to be 15%. Make sure my X and Y are clicked on and then click apply. And then I can drag that into my job. We'll close that down. Now what I can do is just kind of center that by pressing F9 on my keyboard. And there we have a small version of the bigger version and that looks really great. Now what I want to do is I want to make two copies of this. The first copy is going to be what we're actually going to use to create the, the maquette from. The other one we're going to use for reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these, right click on them, and I'm gonna say copy to layer, or move to layer, excuse me. And we're gonna say new layer, and we're gonna call this maquette reference. And we'll just click okay. You'll see it's been now moved there. Now we're gonna select that again and right click, and we're going to copy to another layer we're going to call this maquette cut. And we're going to give that a different color just to make it a little bit easier to see. And we'll click OK. 
you see that's been moved. Now if we look at our layers manager up here, you'll see we've got two extra, those two extra layers we just created. So for now, let's just turn off the maquette cut for a sec and let's lay out our reference. Now, once we get all the bits for our maquette cut out, we're gonna need to be able to line them up with something. And that's what we're gonna use this for. So for right now, we're just gonna grab this set of side vectors, move it down there. I'm gonna grab this set of vectors here for the overall shape, slide it up there. And then what we can do is with these side vectors selected, I'm gonna hold down my Control, Shift, and H key. So it's Control to copy, Shift across an axis, and H is the horizontal axis. Press H and there I have it. Move my Use my cursor keys to move that into place. Now, if I go ahead and print this out at actual size, I can then lay out my parts of my maquette and make sure everything lines up perfectly where it belongs. So let's just go ahead and hide this for a second and turn on our maquette cut layer. Now let's start to build the parts that we're actually going to cut. So we're going to need um, none of these. All we need is just the backing board. We don't need the seat. We do need the seat length though in a second. Just delete those out of there, supports out of there, and that out of there. Okay, and we're going to need three seat boards. Okay, this is the width I want to make. So if I press T on my keyboard, you'll see that the width of those is at this scale is three quarters of an inch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press T on the keyboard and we're gonna make this vector three quarters of an inch tall. Click apply. Oh, unclick the X and Y and click apply. Let's undo that. Control Z, sorry, I should have that clicked first. And then click apply. Oh, shoot, why don't I click that? No idea why I keep doing that. Sorry, let's do that. Oh, hold on, click that. 0.75. There we go. And click apply. And that's great. So that's going to be one of our words for the bottom. And what we can do now is just kind of move that out of the way for a second. We need three of those. So let's move this backing board out of the way. And we're going to copy that three times, pulling down the control key one. And there's the three of them for us, ready to go. That's perfect. Now let's talk about what we need here. So we're going to need two of these. So let's just move that up there out of the way. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a copy of it and then press H on the keyboard because we need an opposite one for the other end of our bench. We're gonna need two of these. That's two of those. We don't need these anymore. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all three of these vectors and we're gonna weld those together to make one vector. Okay, and it's notice it turned green. That's because up here I have my original design vector selected. It's, it's the one that's that's highlighted. I want to make sure my maquette cut is. So let's just go ahead and undo that. And we go ahead and do that again. You'll see that it ends up staying on that same layer again. And then we're just going to hold down my control key and make a copy of that. Press H. And then I want to flip it upside down just to make it fit a little bit better on my page. And so I can go ahead and just kind of scoot those around so everything fits. There we go. Now, there's a couple different ways you can print from your software. You can simply go up and press File and Print. But what that's going to do is it's going to print out something that's not at actual size. So how do we get this out of our software at actual size? Well, the trick is to go down and export it as a PDF. So we're going to export as a PDF. We're going to export um, the stuff that's on our maquette sheet. We're going to do the maquette cut. We're going to make sure that the maquette cut is the layer that we're going to choose. And then we're going to choose all of the visible, all of the components on that layer. Okay. We're going to go ahead and press export. Software will ask us for a file name. So we're just going to call that um, maquette. We can click save. And then now on our, in that location. So if I go find that file, Okay, and here's the file called Garden Bench Maquette. We're just going to click on that. And when it loads in, this is a PDF. So we can go up here and choose print. Then we can print this at the actual size. Actual size is selected here. And we can click print and that'll print out a sheet on our printer so that things are the right size. We're going to do exactly the same thing for the other layer. 
print that out the same way by going to File, Export as a PDF, and then we can go ahead and print that out so we have all, all that we need for our, for our reference. And there it is there, and now I can print that out so I can lay my parts on it and make sure everything lines up. That's great. Now in the end, what you can do is you can take out that, that sheet of paper that you've printed out with your actual size uh, parts on it, the cut parts on it, the cuts on it, and you can use some spray sticky glue and stick it to some cardboard and create your maquette that way by cutting out all those parts and building your maquette. Or you can do what I did and create something a lot like this. And there we have. And this is gonna be perfect for me to be able to look over and decide what kind of joinery I need to do, any kind of trouble areas there are, and also make sure that it actually sits up straight and looks like the right size it should be. So as I said, having this little miniature of the project on hand, I can really take apart or look at how we can take this apart to create the parts to reassemble this thing so it looks like that. First of all, I know that the leg section I can't cut out of one piece, so it's gonna to need to be three pieces. So my plan is that this piece at the top will be cut halfway through on each end, pocketed on each end, and be able to fit together so that we have a unique thickness all the way through, or a consistent thickness. And you'll see what I mean in the middle, but it's kind of good that you know that ahead of time. And also this uh, bracket here that we have the, um, or support that we have the seat board sitting on, we want it to be shaped a little bit different. It looks a little bit heavy here, but I can tell just by the looks of it, I'd like to change it up a little bit. Um, and then we need to consider how we're going to put the back into these back supports and what that's going to look like. I think using a, a tenon and mortise kind of setup we kind of need, but we know that using a CNC machine, there's some limitations to that and some things that we need to consider when we're doing that sort of a joint. So um, I guess from there, we can go right into the software and start to uh, mirror those different ideas into our project design. Okay, now that we're back into the software, you'll see that I have an extra sheet set up called Updated Design. So this sheet is exactly the same size as the original design. That way I can copy over those vectors that I originally created so I can make some modifications to that. I want to keep that original set of vectors in case something goes really wrong and I need to refer back to that. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and select all of those vectors. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to say Copy to Sheet Updated Design. And I'll go ahead and double click on that sheet. And there we have it right there. So these are the vectors that we can go ahead and edit. So the first thing I wanna do is look at the support for the actual seat. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm gonna go in and edit that to sort of fit in a bit better. Now the idea will be that I'll pocket out the back of the leg and set this support in about a quarter inch. That way we'll have a little extra support and then I'll use dowels to hold it in place. So if I go in the node mode by pressing N on the keyboard, I can hover over here and I can insert a node by pressing I on the keyboard. And then I'll go over this way a little bit and do the same over here and here. And that looks okay. And then we'll go back to the center again and I'm gonna add in a node here and there. And we just grab those two nodes. Now for now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my grid snapping just to make this a little bit easier. And also I'm gonna add in an extra guideline so I can line up everything nice and straight. So let's go ahead and drag down a guideline here. Now I wanna create a parallel guideline that's about one inch below that. And the best way to do that is gonna to be to right click on that and then create a relative guide. Okay, so we're gonna only create one of those. And we're gonna create that position, it's gonna be negative one inch. So we can create the new guideline and we'll close this down. Let's reselect that box again, go into node mode, grab those two vectors or those two nodes there and drag them up and they'll snap onto that guideline, which is perfect. Let's just grab this one node and we'll slide it over there. We're gonna need to slide this guy over so he snaps onto there. Perfect, slide over a bit. We can just go ahead and bring that one there. Same thing, we'll zoom in and just bring that over to there. Snaps on nicely. Go up to the front here, and we're going to insert in another node, and we're gonna drag that in there, and that guy straight up. To zoom in to make sure that we snap properly. There we have it, and that's great. And that's kind of the shape we want. Actually, I'd like to just kind of bring this in a little bit. 
that way we're going to have a bit of a, an area that we can lock this into place. And that's pretty much what I want right there. Now let's go ahead and draw in some representations of the actual dowels we're going to use. And these are going to be circles. Let's go over to our draw circle tool. And now I think we've got some dowel in the lab that's about 0.4 of an inch. So that's great. So let's just drop one of those in here and then we'll drop two over here and we'll close that down. We might just, oops, just undo that. Let's go back in there again. I grabbed that guideline by mistake. We don't really need this guideline anymore. So let's just go ahead and delete that guideline out of there. And we'll delete that one out of there too. I think we can grab this circle and we can move it to a little safer spot. Somewhere around there will be all right. And there we have it. So that looks really good. Now let's have a look at the boards on the, uh, the seat of our bench. Uh, unfortunately, the material that I have that I can actually use won't allow me to cut three uh, of the same size. So what I'm gonna need to do is actually shrink those down a little bit, make the width a little bit, uh, a little bit less to make it work. So let's just go ahead now and zoom in on those. We're gonna delete these two here. And then we're gonna select this first one. Now let's go ahead and change the width of that. Press T on our keyboard. We're gonna change that to be 3.5 inches wide. Make sure that we have the link X and Y not turned on and we can click apply and then close that down. Now I wanna have about an inch between each one of these boards. And so the best way to do that is gonna to be to use our array copy tool. So we'll select that. It's already picked up the object size from the selected object that we have. So that's a three and a half by one. We want one row, a col four different columns. We're gonna put the gap between each of these objects and it's gonna be one inch on X. And we can just go ahead and click copy. And there we have it and close that down. Now that we have those all selected, I'm gonna right click on that and go down and group those together. Okay, and then we'll just snap those to the end of our support here. Now that looks really good. Now if you remember a while ago when we were up in our edit menu here down under snap options, I had set up a fixed nudge distance of a quarter inch. And this is where this is going to come into account. If I hold down my control and my shift key and then use my down arrow to nudge, it'll move exactly a quarter inch. That's exactly where I want it to be. So now what I'd like to do is to create four notches in this support so I can easily place those boards into it and they all line up perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of these boards. So I'm gonna hit Control C, copy those to my clipboard. I'm gonna use the subtract feature over here under our edit object. So we're, it's gonna subtract the second selected vector from the first, in this case it's my group. So I'm gonna select this as my first vector, hold down my shift key and grab the boards. And then we're gonna choose select or subtract, excuse me. And then we are gonna paste that back in again. And there we have our boards right where they belong in place. So that looks really good. I'm really quite happy with that. The next thing we're gonna look at is our back support. Now the first little problem I see is right here at the bottom where this comes out really close to the edge of this leg. So if I'm gonna pocket that in, at this, this pocket in um, a quarter inch on the back of this leg so I can fit this support in there, then I'm gonna need to make, give myself a little bit more distance here. So if I select that and I go into node mode, I'll insert in a node right there. I already have one here. So I'm just gonna hover over that and press delete on my keyboard. And that's more the shape that I'd like to have so I can fit that in there. Now I'd like to add in some dowels. Let's go back to our draw circle tool and I'll just drop in three dowels like that. That looks pretty good. And we'll close that down. I think that's all the work I want to do with that back support. Let's talk about the connector that's going to hold the two legs together and it's going to go across the top here. My idea is that I want this to say a uniform thickness the leg is. So this top connector, when it hooks into the leg, the total of the total thickness needs to be one inch. That's my material thickness. I'm not going to worry about that pocket right now, but I just wanted to understand how that was going to work. And we're going to need to place some dowels to hold this all together. So we're gonna go back to our circle tool and we're gonna drop in two dowels. I'm gonna try and follow this angle of the line here. So drop one there and one right around there somewhere. And same over here, one around there and one down here. And that looks pretty good. I might actually grab this one and use my nudge 
keys and nudge it over a little bit so it looks a little bit better. I think that looks pretty good. I actually might bring those down just a little bit. And that's perfect. That's all we need to do with that for this moment in time. And we'll get back to that in a bit, or the rest of it in a bit. Now we need to worry about looking at the front of our bench and what changes we need to make. What I'd like to do is I'd like to pocket this support into the back of these legs by a quarter inch. And the same with the back rest support here as well. So we're going to grab all of this stuff here. And if you remember, back to that snap option setting that we used here, this fix nudge thing, it's still set to a quarter inch. If we hold down that control and the shift, we can go ahead and nudge that over a quarter inch exactly. And we're going to do the same with this leg over here. We'll select that. I'm going to nudge that over a quarter inch. That way you'll see that the support is now going to be stuck into that or recessed into this leg by a quarter inch. And same with the back supports, which looks pretty neat. Um, the next thing we're going to think about now is that we actually move these boards into this support a quarter inch. So again, let's select that, hold down the control shift and nudge that down. So that all lines up. We're going to need to move these as well. Okay. In the end, we may not even use these. They're just here just right now for just so we can see them if we need them for reference. That gap here now matches the gap that you see over here, which is perfect. That's what I'd like to have. Now let's talk about the actual bench back. I want to pocket that into the back of the support here by a quarter inch. So again, hold down that control shift and we're going to nudge that over. But when I do that, that means I need to nudge all of this stuff over again. Okay. Twice. And there we have that is now nudged in the right distance. Okay. I've got this seat board now is way too long. So we're going to select that. We're just going to drag that in so it matches the inside of that leg. That looks really good. We'll take a look at that again up close. Now the next part we're going to think about doing is how are we going to connect the back of this bench, the backboard of this bench into the supports for it. And I think the best way to do that is going to be a mortise and tenon kind of setup. And you know that has some of its own kind of limitations when you're working with the CNC and we're going to try and overcome those. But for right now, I want to indicate where the tenons are going to be and then where the mortise is going to be in those supports. So to do that, we're going to zoom in and we're going to draw two rectangles here. We're going to draw one like this and we're going to make sure it's about an inch and a half. Uh, two inches will be fine. We'll change it later and we'll make it uh, about 0.4 thick. So we're going to make that 0.4 inch and a half. And we'll click apply. We'll close that down. And we'll just zoom in and make sure that, that snaps to the back of that. It's perfect. Let's make a copy of that. So we're going to hold our control key and our alt key. I'm just going to slide that down, position that somewhere around there. That's good. Take both of those and we're just going to copy those across, control and alt again and drag them over. And we're just going to make sure they snap to where they need to be. Again, working very organically here like I always do in our software. That looks pretty neat. I'm happy with that. Now let's get the mortise, the recesses in here that we're going to put those tenons into. So what we're going to do is we are going to draw a rectangle that represents the thickness of this backing here. So, or the back rest, we're going to make it one inch thick. Okay. We'll click apply, close that down. And then we're going to make a copy of these across to that thickness. Okay. Hold down my control and alt key and drag it over. Now I'm putting these at the back that way, um, these, tenons will slide into the back of my recess. It just makes sense for me that way. I'm not going to do a double sided cut. I didn't want them to be super thick. So that's why I'm choosing to do that. So let's just grab this and we're going to make sure that we snap onto this top right node here and we'll drag it over and we're going to snap it on to that corner. That's the top tip for making sure that we rotate this into place properly. We're going to click on that center control handle and you'll see it'll turn into our rotation point. We're going to move that up to there and then when we grab and we rotate this around. It's going to rotate from that top right corner and rotate that into place. And then off we go. And let's just zoom back out again and have a look and make sure that we've taken care of everything that we need to 
and I'm pretty happy with that. The next thing we need to do now is to talk about filleting things so that we can take into account the shape of our cutter so everything will slot together nice and tight. So let's have a look at some of these areas here that we're going to have troubles with because we have a round cutter in our CNC machine. So the first little thing that I do when I'm doing something like this is I make use of this space that's outside of my actual job sheet or my job space here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. So right, I'm going to select all that, hold down my control key. I'm just going to copy it down here again. This, this is essential because if I make a mistake, I don't. I want to have the original vectors to go back to in the end. So to accommodate for the round tool, we're going to be using the filleting here. And there's three different sorts of fillets. There's a normal fillet, a dog bone fillet, and a T-bone fillet. And we're going to make use of most of these um, in our design. I'm going to make sure that we put in the radius of our tool up top. That's important. So I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill, or it might be slightly less but 1.25 is the radius of that tool or a little bit more than the radius, which is perfectly fine for what I want to do. So the first thing we're going to look at is this support here for our seat. There are lots of areas that seems I'm going to be cutting this from the top down that I can't get nice sharp corners. So let's just slide over here a little bit and we're going to radius the, with a normal, sorry, the T-bone, Radius. We're going to plop one there. So you'll see that our tool can come along the outside here, can dip down, come back, and then it's going to leave a nice straight point there for this board to fit into. If I didn't do that, then I'd have to do a double-sided cut on these boards so I could round over the edge, and I don't want to bother with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in these fillets in there. Just step along. Well, that looks pretty good. And now sort of a design feature, what I want to do is do some other sort of radiusing here. So I want to make sure that I, I fill it this round in here. And that's important again, because my tool is round. And if I don't do that, then I want to have a round internal corner and a, and a sharp external corner, and they're not going to fit together properly. So I may as well just go ahead and do that right here. And that way I can see it. I'm sure that fits all in there nicely. Same with here. Don't need to worry about this because the tool can come in straight and get that nice and straight right there. That one there we're going to worry about. This one here is straight. We don't need to worry about that. I'll radius the bottom of this just to give it a nice sort of feel. And that looks pretty good for that support. I'm happy with that. Now let's take a look at the back support. We're going to go ahead and do the same. We're going to radius this corner here and that one there and that one there. So those are filleted properly for my tool. And that's really good. And then when it comes to this, the pocket for the back of our bench, I need to make sure that I do something with this corner here. Again, if I radius this pocket this way, then I'm gonna end up having to radius the edge of my board, which I don't wanna do. So again, I can make use of one of these T-bone fillets and I can put that in there. And again, that'll make a nice straight corner for that board to fit into. And that's great. Now let's talk about these uh, mortises here. How are we going to work with those? I want to make sure that I keep this internal rectangle exactly like it is because when I cut my, uh, my tenons on the back board, then it needs to fit into this space. So again, if I use this T-bone, I can go ahead and round that one that way and this one that way. And you can see that I still keep that internal shape that I want. And then I've got that. And that's going to make the perfect spot. And I still have lots of room for glue to, to um, connect with surfaces and so on in there. So I'm not too worried about that. Let's do the same with this one. Oh, wrong side. One thing that's kind of nice about the filleting tool is if you happen to make a mistake and put it on the wrong side, you can just click it again and it'll take it away. So you can easily just do and undo those. That looks pretty good. Now let's talk about this connector here. I'm going to wrap, I'm going to, Radius the bottom of that with a normal fillet right there. That's great. And that one there is great as well. Oh, I got a couple extra ones here for some reason. There we go. Let's get rid of those. And that's pretty much it. That's all I need to worry about right now for this the seat. Now, now let's talk about the back here. Again, I need to worry about these tenons. So let's copy this down just like I did a second ago. 
and we'll zoom in a bit. Now when I cut this out, you'll see that, that my bit is round, so it's going to leave a cusp in there. Well, I don't want that cusp to be there, so how can I deal with that? Well, first thing we're going to do is we need to connect these to our larger shape. And we'll worry about actually pocketing these down thinner a little bit later on. We're just going to move those in like that. And same with over here. I'm just going to drag those this way. We're going to drag all, we're going to select all of this and we are going to weld it together. I have a nice shape like that. Go select this. We're going to go back to our fillet tool again. And we're going to put a T-bone fillet. Uh, oh, sorry. T-bone fillet. There we go, like that. Sorry, I didn't have it selected. Put one there as well. Okay, and that'll make sure that fits into my, the, the mortise fine. Oh, wrong side. There we go. And we'll do the same for the other side. And there we have it. Okay, that should be all that we need to worry about for right now. With that, and of course, the other end of this bench is just a mirror of this, so everything works out fine. So that's great. Okay, now that we have got that all sorted out, we're going to need to go and work on the areas that are the vectors that we need to use to pocket out the backs of our legs and other parts so that everything will fit together nicely. Okay, so so we can go ahead and create the vectors for the pockets on this. We're going to need to do some copying, and there's all kinds of different ways you can do this, but for me, this is what I think is the easiest way. So we're going to work on this leg first, okay? So we're going to grab this vector here, hold down the shift key. We need this, 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 this. And we need those dowel holes because everything needs to line back up again. We don't need to worry about any of this stuff up here because we're going to deal with that a little bit later. So we're just going to hold down my control key and we're going to copy that over to here. Again, we're working inside that gray area outside of our job space. This is a great place to kind of do some of this scratch work. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the features over here that we have under our edit objects called overlap. So we're going to keep the overlapping areas of a selected or of selected vectors. But when we do that, we're going to lose the the actual second vector. So what we're going to do is we're just, we'll just show I'll show you a quick demo of how it works. So we're going to grab these two vectors. I only want to keep I want to keep this internal section. So when I do that. You'll see what happens. I'm only left with this piece right there, which is great, but I also need the leg still. So let's undo that. Edit, undo. Okay, and we are going to go ahead and make sure we make a copy of this leg. Okay, so Control C. And now we're going to go ahead and do that operation, and we're going to paste that back in again. And now we have the area that we want to pocket out. Then we have this vector here that we can use as a profile vector. We're going to do the same with this one. We need to make sure that we Copy that leg, shift select this, and that support. And we'll do the same, and we'll paste that back in again. We'll do the same again with this one, but that leg is still in our, on our clipboard, so we're gonna go ahead and just do that. And we'll paste that in, and there we have it. So with our leg, we know that we're gonna pocket out those areas of our um, so that we can fit in the other parts and they're all radius properly. So everything should fit in nice There's no surprises here with this. Oh, I did see I did forget this radius right there So good thing I noticed that so what we can do just to correct that right now So we can go in and do our normal radius here Just radius that guy right there right now but We don't want to forget to go over here and radius it off this one here just so we have that correct Later on there we go. That's all fixed up Now, in order to do these pockets, what I need to do is I need to overshoot outside of the area that I'm going to run my profile cut. Now, in a lot of cases, that's pretty easy. I could just select, for instance, with this line here, I could just go into node mode and move those, grab these two vectors here, these two nodes here, hold down my control and shift and move it out a quarter inch, and that would be lots. But that doesn't work all the time when we have lines that intersect at strange angles here. So what we can do to fix that or to give us some 
sort of a visual reference to that, we're going to go ahead and select that profile vector and we're going to offset that outwards a quarter inch. Okay, and you'll see that now we have this extra vector here. And now I can use that to help to line up these nodes so I can overshoot, like I said. So, node edit, I'm just going to go ahead and just snap that to there. It's perfect because we have smart snapping turned on and everything. It remembers the angle that it's going at there, which works really well. This one's a bit more tricky because, oh, sorry, because we are going to actually, um, we're going to intersect with a curve here. So sometimes it doesn't quite snap like you expect, but that's all right because I have a quarter inch here. I only need to go out the radius of my tool. So that's half the diameter. So I can go anywhere past the center of that and I'm going to be all right. Same with this there. not too worried about it, as long as I am half over my curve. It's perfect. So that's going to give me what I need to do to create the proper pockets for those. And using that offset is a great way to reference that. Now, instead of me showing you all of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the layer that I've got already set up with all of that already on there. And then we can talk about that. Okay, I forgot to show you something. So we're gonna do it right now. And this is a really important thing. It's a new feature of version 11. So all of these dowel holes are all 0.4 of an inch. If you remember from when I actually created them. Well, when I go looking in the actual labs, I don't have a dowel that's that size. So I need to size these all up to be the proper size. And now is the time to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of those Gather those all up. And we're going to go into our set selected object size form. And we have a new option here called scale items individually. So if I select that, I can simply go down here and change these all to 0.55 of an inch. And then 0.55 here. So that would have done it automatically if I had had the link XY selected. And then I can click apply. And you see they all get enlarged the exact amount all at the same time, which is fantastic. This is perfect if you're doing things that have a lot of dowel holes or maybe you're doing um, countersinking of, of screws and so on and you need those all to be sized up to a certain size and you do it after, in, in the end, it's going to save you a lot of time instead of doing them individually like you had to do before. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead now and hide that. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this out of there. We're going to go into my layers here and we're going to show my pockets and fillets. So this is my final pockets and fillets and I've done exactly what I showed you a minute ago here. I did all my filleting here, created the pockets areas over here. And I've got of course two sets of legs, two connectors, two supports for my seats, two backs, back supports for my backboard. I've got my backboard here all ready to go and I've got the four boards all set up. Now there's one thing that I didn't show you was these vectors right here are new to you. That's because when I was done with my design, I decided that I wanted there to be a recess on the outside of this support so that my seat boards line up nice and flush. If that wasn't there, I'd have a little bit of a step if you look down on my bench. I didn't want that there, so I added this pocket in. Um, which really helped with the design. And so there we have it. There's all our parts that we have. And now all we need to do is to go in and start and to create some tooling. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the file that I used to actually create the tooling for the job that I cut in the end. Now, this is the file that you're gonna get. So please make sure that you check over the tooling. Make sure it's safe and appropriate for your machine, the tools you have on hand, and the material that you're cutting into, okay? Safety first. All the way. So here we have the file and you'll see something that's really quite different about it. We've got some new sheets in here. We've got five new sheets and then we also have a six sheet here called test fit. I decided that it would be important that we actually went ahead and cut 
one test part to make sure that my allowances were correct. So I chose to cut that support that goes across the top of the leg or that connector that goes across the top of those two legs. I felt that was a good choice to make sure everything was gonna work out. I could also go ahead and check to make sure my dowels were gonna fit into the holes before I created any other tooling. Now these other five different boards here across the center, they are the actual size boards that I actually bought from the big box store. Um, so this one is 72 inches long by about eight inches wide. This one, there's two boards that are 48 inches long by about eight inches wide again. There's one that's 37 and 37 and 37. Those are the same three lengths, but what's gonna go on them is slightly different. And to have them here laid out this way meant that I could manually nest on the stuff I needed to onto those boards to make sure everything could fit. Now, I had to look at my boards and make sure that I took into account any of the imperfections that were on there. Um, there was knots, there was cracks. These aren't perfect boards by any means from this store. Um, so to do that, what I did, I went to my boards, I measured where all the knots and the cracks were, and then I actually indicated those on these sheets. So on board number four, there was a knot in the middle. There was some area here that I could use, but I had to make sure that I avoided that knot. There was a crack at the end. And in this board here, there was a huge crack that I had to totally 100% avoid all the time. So having those vectors there was really helpful when I went to place on my parts so that I wouldn't hit those areas, or at least if I was gonna, I knew that I was gonna in the end. So let's go ahead now and show my final set of board parts. So on this long board, I'm gonna have my bench back. We've got those um, tenons here, and we're gonna use these extra vectors here to pocket down to make sure that that tendon is the right thickness to fit into the hole. I've got the two different supports here at the top, or the two different connectors, sorry, for the legs. They're mirrors of each other, so that was important to have those mirrored properly. When it comes to doing the seat boards, I had to come up with a little bit of a different way of cutting this, but for us right now, there are the two boards. I'm gonna cut those boards twice, so I'm gonna have four of those, which is fine. I've got one set of legs, and you'll see that I have that offset vector in here. That was there because I had actually made a little bit of a mistake, and I needed to make sure to check that I got rid of a fillet at the top here. So I just left that in there so you would know how I did that. There's the other set of legs, and then here are the bench seat supports, and then the bench back supports. So let's quickly go ahead and take a look at all the tooling. Now, I've used very basic pockets and profile cuts for all of these parts, nothing special here. So what I'm gonna point out to you is where I actually added in the extra allowances to make sure all these parts fit together properly. So if you have a look at the board number one, this is my 72 inch long board. Um, if we can bring up our tooling for that and we'll pin this down. See that we have leg pockets. So I'm gonna turn that on. Now one of the things that I highly suggest you do when you're doing something like this, when you're using allowances, is not to forget to use your, your solid 2D pr preview of your tool pass. If I turn that on, we can see instantly what area that's gonna clean out. But also if I zoom in really tight, you'll see that I've actually added a little bit of an allowance there. So if I look at that pocket, you'll see that I'm gonna do a cut depth, which is half my material. Like I mentioned before, when I fit this connector at the top of my legs, I wanna make sure that they fit together so that they look like they're one piece of wood. Okay, so the same thickness all the way through. I'm gonna use a quarter inch end mill. The part that's important right here is this pocket allowance. So I'm gonna over cut, oversize cut these pockets, but I don't wanna do the same to the top of my leg. I wanna leave it just the way it is, okay? That's important, and I'll point that out again in a second. Okay, so we have that, that's perfect. We've got our dowel holes, which again, if we take a look at that tool path, it's gonna go down, and it's gonna go down, it's gonna start depth, it's gonna be half an inch deep, and it's gonna go down the other half inch plus 0.2. Don't forget, you can put formulas into your actual um, boxes here instead of just typing in hard numbers. That way if I go and change the, the thickness of my material, this will automatically update for me. Okay, again, I'm using that pocket allowance. I wanna make those dowel holes slightly oversized so my, my dowel will fit in there. I want it to be snug, but I don't want it to be too tight. I don't want it to be too loose either. So that was a good number. And again, because I cut that test part, I could, I've already tested that 
allowance out and everything works perfectly fine. Let's just close that down. I got my tendon pockets and you'll see that they're gonna pocket out that area right there. And this is a good, good chance to show you there's the radius of that tool right there. And that's why I need to sometimes do these different fillets here to get rid of that radius. Okay, and then we have the cutout in the end. So let's just go ahead and quickly preview that tooling. Now this is also a good chance for me to point out, I used a lot of tabs um, on the profile cut of that backboard. That's because I want it to stay in place if I decide to put some 3D content on that. If I wasn't too worried about that, I could lessen the number of, of um, tabs that I used, but I added a couple extra for that exact purpose. And that looks just like what I expected. Okay, let's go ahead now and have a look at the next sheet here, which is gonna be the seat boards. Now because these were each three and a half inches wide, so that's three and three, three and a half, I think it's seven inches. I only had actually about an inch left on the outside of my board. And if I wanna cut this out with a quarter inch end mill, I only have a half inch or a quarter inch on the outside of all this, if I happen to get everything lined up perfectly. And I was a little unsure if that was gonna work or not. So what I wanted to do was maximize the amount of material I had. So what I chose to do was to actually create a center profile cut along the center of that. So we take a look at that. You see that's one line. I'm going down 1.02 inches deep. So that's through my material. I'm gonna use that same quarter inch end mill. I'm gonna cut on the line. So it's just gonna go up and down the middle of my board back and forth, adding in some tabs. You can see where those are. And then with all of my profile cuts, I'm gonna use my ramping, okay? This is gonna take some of the load off my tool as it moves around and cuts out my parts. Let me just close that for a second. And then I'm gonna do one profile cut that's outside of the boards. It's very simple, all the way around. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I have nice tabs on the end of my boards, not on the sides, because they may not actually hold on to anything if my material isn't square on my machine. So I decided that I was just gonna put those on the end. So let's close that down. And let's preview the tooling for that as well. There it goes back and forth through the center, and then we have the outside edges, and there's a very little bit of material on the outside of it to hold that in place. But that's exactly what I want, and I'm gonna run that set of tool pads twice on two different boards, so the net of that is four seat boards in the end I'm gonna have. Okay, that's great. The next thing we're gonna look at is gonna be our legs. Now, as I pointed out before, when I do my pockets for the top here, there isn't going to be any kind of a pocket allowance on that. I'm taking care of that on the connector. So this is just a basic pocket going down a half an inch, which is great. When it comes to the actual uh, pockets for the, uh, the the bench support and the 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 part that's going to hold the backs the back supports. Um, I'm only going to go down a quarter inch so I can put those two, two two paths together. There is that quarter inch and I'm going to use a pocket allowance on those to make those a bit bigger because I don't want to use that allowance on the real parts that are going to fit into there. So I use that negative um, 0 0.001. Close that down. Make sure we have that preview there. And then we're going to use our dowels. Same as before. Nothing different about that. I use the allowance again. We're going to use our back brace dowel holes. So there's two different sets of dowel holes. And the why I have two different sets is because remember, the ones at the top started at an inch down already in my material. And these ones start at a quarter inch down in my material because that's how far my pocket goes. And then I have my cutout pass in the end. So let's go ahead and have a look at those. That looks really nice. Happy with that. And the next sheet that I have here is just the other set of legs. I guess we don't need to go over that. It's the same set of tool paths, just different locations. And then we have the last one is going to be the seat supports and the back support. And again, let's take a quick look at those. We have our bench support here. So this is that step that I was telling you about that I wanted to make sure I cut that out so that the ends of my boards line up nice and flush with that support. So I'm gonna pocket that down a quarter inch. Okay, we're gonna have a look at our step for our back support, which is right here. 
cut that down a quarter inch and if we zoom in you'll see that I didn't use the oh I did use the allowance on that so it's going to be a little bit bigger that hole which is great my board should fit there nice and tight close that down and we have our dowel holes same story as before nothing different there and then we can look at our mortise in the back for so I'm going to hide those for a second let's take a look at that so you'll see that there aren't any areas where I and filleting inside of where that board is gonna, or that tenon's gonna fit inside of there. So I'm gonna touch in here, I'm gonna touch along there, and that's gonna be perfect for fitting that in there. And I did slightly oversize that a bit, so everything should be great. Actually, no, I didn't oversize that. And I wanna point that out. I wanted it to be a nice tight fit. I didn't want any play at all in there, because um, I really wanted it to be nice and secure on the back of that. And I think that worked out well for me in the end, but you might want to put a little bit of an allowance on there if, you, if you're worried about that, but I was quite happy with that. And then we have the cutout in the end of all those parts. Let's turn all those tool paths on. And let's preview the tool paths. And there we have it. Try to put those tabs places where it wouldn't affect things too much. And I think that I achieved that quite nicely. So there we have it. That's all the tooling that we need to do. We've done all of that. Um, I'm really happy with it all. Um, so the next step now is to take that and save it out and cut it on our CNC machine, as long as we don't want to add some more 3D content into it. And that's what I'd like to show you in our next video, how we're going to go ahead and do that. As I'm sure you noticed, I expected that you had a working knowledge of your software, but I did touch on a lot of tools that you have at your disposal. First of all, the basic drawing tools and the node editing tools. I showed you how to create a parallel guideline. I showed you the power of the sheets and how that's a really, really important and a great new feature of version 11. I use it all the time now. It's changed the way I work with our software. I showed you how to copy back and forth between sheets. I showed you the importance of fillets so we can make sure that parts fit together properly when they come right off the machine. I showed you how to resize vectors individually, and that's with respect to the dowels, that I thought I had dowels at a certain diameter, but I didn't, and I wanted to size all those to the new diameter all at one time. I showed you how to use some of the vector trim tools. Fixed nudge distance is a great little tool for you to be able to nudge things around your job space at a fixed distance. I showed you the toolpath allowance, which again, helps to make sure those parts fit together nice and snug. I showed you how to export to a PDF file so that you could print things on your printer at actual size. And also, I showed you how to use the space around your job sheet uh, to your advantage as sort of a scratch area to get some, try some of your ideas and make sure they work. Now, in our next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this file, and if you are a VCAR Pro user, I'll show you how to bring in some already pre-made clip art and jazz up your job a little bit. And if you're an Aspire user or new to Aspire user, or if you're somebody that wants to get into Aspire, I'm gonna show you to take some of the very basic modeling tools and add some wonderful value to your project in the end by creating a bespoke relief for the back of your bench. Now, if you don't yet have Aspire and you wanna dabble in a bit before you see the video, then why don't you go over to vector.com and download a trial version because all the tools that we are gonna use are working in that version. So that would be great for you to try ahead of time. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then please do. And also, there will be a link in the bottom so you can get ready to watch the next video when it's released. Thanks again. Until next time, keep safe.